Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So in front of us is the 2023 BMW 330i. This is finished off in Brooklyn Gray, has an MSRP at just over $53,000 with the M Sport package, M Sport Pro package, along with the premium package too. So we have a pretty well equipped family style sedan. This is on the smaller size being the three series, but powering the 330i is a two liter twin power turbo four cylinder paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. This pumps out 255 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque sent to the rear wheels, propelling this 3,700 pound sedan from zero to 60 in just over five seconds. It has a top speed of 156. And then you're looking right around 25 miles per gallon in the city and 34 out on the highway. So it's a pretty fuel efficient sedan with some performance to it, especially having that M Sport package. Now that also provides it with all the gloss black that you will see throughout the entire exterior. So the surround for the kidney grill with the vertical slats, all of the lower section, there's parking sensors integrated, even air inlets on both sides that are gloss black. This has LED headlights, DRLs and turn signals, really nice sleek design to them. So they match well with that narrow grill and then great lines come down the hood. So it gives it a very aggressive appearance for this almost entry level 330i now for the side the gloss black makes its way to these 19 inch wheels with that double spoke design the m sport package provides it with the red brake calipers there's really nice lines that run down the lower side skirt there gloss black for the power folding side mirrors there's a sunroof up top all of the gloss black surrounding the windows i think it gives it a really really nice design and then more gloss black for the trunk mounted spoiler, LED taillights, gloss black for the diffuser, and then it's even surrounding the dual exhaust, which you can remote start this. So let's take a listen just by triple tapping that lock button. And then you can triple tap on it again to shut it off as needed. Really cool feature to have, of course. Now to gain access to the trunk, two different ways, key, uh, key fob, and that button. And even though this is on the smaller size, you can go with the five series or the seven, still plenty of space. There's a storage bin on both sides, no storage underneath the floor, surprisingly, but you can fold down at the back seat. So pull on those tabs and that gives you a lot more interior space. And as you just heard the vehicle locked, a really convenient feature to have is that I can unlock it with the back door handles. And then for this interior, we have the black leather, brushed aluminum, interior ambient lighting, Harman Kardon sound system, and some storage space located in the lower section. And then that leather makes its way to these seats, which have a great design to them. Now at five foot 10, I have plenty of space for my legs. There are storage pockets, climate adjustments, and some auxiliaries. I have about a half inch or so above my head. It's spacious though. We have the dome lights there. Uh, it's practical. I could definitely fit in the back and be fine. If you don't have a center passenger, you get two cup holders and then you can also fold down the entire middle seat. So if you need that access, maybe you want a little bit higher of an armrest, you have the option to do that and it's very open in the back. So even being on the smaller end, it's still pretty practical and roomy. Now the front door panel is just like the rear. There's the memory seating adjustments along with the uh, uh, side mirror adjustments, window controls, trunk release, and even more storage. And then for these automatic seats, there is one manual adjustment and that is for this leg support. So you can adjust that as needed. There's lumbar support, of course. And let's fire this back up. That button is in the middle and we can go over the rest of this info. Now for the gauge cluster setup, there's a few different ways that you can configure this. So currently we're looking at miles per hour and then the tack on the right side. If I use this button right in the middle, it's surrounded by your Bluetooth and voice commands, tuning and volume. Now we can get into some content. So if I scroll down, there's a G meter, there's also your media and radio. And then if I go back up, you can look at your route preview, which is the compass, there's trip data, and then just miles per hour. Now I can also scroll over to the layout and configure that as needed. So there's three different settings, just depending on how you would like to view this. And then the last one is for the head-up display. 
you have four different views, standard, directional, sport, and then reduced. And that would just depends on if you wanna see the tack, you wanna pull up your compass or just look at miles per hour and the speed limit sign. Now for this leather wrap steering wheel, this is an M steering wheel of course, it's heated, cruise controls on the left side and then the paddle shifters are just behind that. Now on the left side, all the headlight adjustments, dimmer switches, one air vent, and then for this middle infotainment system, there's a lot more to go through. For the home screen, there are several icons. You can even add some, just depending on what you would like to see. On the left side, these are all fixed. So you can quickly get into your nav, get into your phone, pull up your music to go through that. And then if you push on the four squares in a square, you get all of these apps, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, your driving settings, interior, exterior lighting. You can go through several different icons to configure this the way that you would like to. Now, if you haven't been able to tell, the lower section of the screen is specific for the climate menu. So that is always fixed. You can pull up your heated seats, your temperature, where you'd like the air to go. And then there's even dials on both sides to further control that. So I think that's a nice integration. Now, this is an optional trim piece. Standard is gloss black, so it's cool to see this design. There's some piano black with brushed aluminum surrounding the two air vents. Power and volume tuning and then some recirc adjustments are to the right of that. And the top of this lid has more of that trim accent, which is really nice. Now this also has the wireless charging pad, two cup holders and some auxiliaries. And then you can also go through this upper screen by using the rotary dial. So you don't have to use it as a touch screen system, which is nice, and then use all those shortcuts to quickly go through it. For the all new shifter design, Pushing it forwards is for reverse. Backup camera and the top down view are on this model. And then if you pull it back once, that's for drive. Do it again, that activates sport mode so that way you can use these paddles. Park is located with the P, so just push on that and you are good to go. Now on the left side, there's traction control, the parking sensors, engine start stop, and then the different driving modes. So there's a few for sport mode, there's one for comfort, and then there are a few for efficiency. So just depending on how you'd like to drive for the day and the throttle response that you're looking for, there's auto hold and the e-brake, and then a little bit of storage in the center armrest with an auxiliary and plenty more storage in the glove box. Now this has the sunroof with the automatic sunshade. So the sunshade and sunroof control are right in the middle. And then a look at visibility from the driver's seat you can easily see in both directions. So it's a small vehicle, very easy to see around, so that makes it easy for parking lot situations. We also have some call buttons and the dome lights are up top as well. And from second gear, here we go. And just a light acceleration, we're up to speed. Shifts are very smooth and precise, so even though this isn't a highly performance oriented BMW. We still have the responsive paddles and shifting, which is nice, especially with this having the M Sport package. You want it to have a little bit more of that performance. And it definitely gives you that. It's just not the quickest. If performance and speed is not important to you, it's still a phenomenal vehicle, don't get me wrong. You can get other models, of course, that are going to be a more performance oriented or focused. But in this 330, if you want a little bit more performance, you want some sportier characteristics, it's a good option to go with. Now I have noticed for the $53,000 price tag, you really don't have that small of a vehicle for the money. So when you compare it to some other vehicles uh, in a similar price range and about the same size, it's really not all that small. So I do like the room that is available and offered. I could easily fit in the back and you have a really nice daily driving vehicle. If you don't want something that's very large, it's so easy to drive, maneuver in parking lot situations uh, and you just want the refinements of a luxury brand, this is a great BMW to get into and realistically, this costs less than some other, even American companies with a, a similar style vehicle. So BMW's luxury brands are more affordable than you may think. And so you could get yourself into a BMW for the similar price of something else that might not be quite as refined feeling as 
a BMW. But I think that's going to wrap it up for this 2023 BMW 330i with the M Sport package. Once again, a huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this vehicle for me today. Definitely check out their website. That link is down below. Give the video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it and smash that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.